1510, England. Edmund Dudley was led to the stand and had his head placed on the pillar which would be the last place he would remember before his untimely death. As he was made to place his neck on the pillar, overlooking the audience who were largely against him, he muttered a series of curses to himself. He truly believed that even in death, he would exact his revenge on those who betrayed him, especially his own upon which he had previously gathered a group of Satanists to lay a curse upon. With one strike from the sword upon King Henry VIII's order, the head of Edmund Dudley rolled, and his generation thereon was cursed, or so it was believed. The Pioneer's Story the first to settle in what would be known as the town of Dudley was Gideon Dudley in 1747, who had purchased a piece of the land to start a farm from Thomas Griffiths. He had moved in with hopes of enjoying his new life as a countryside man, and even though the land was sheltered by large, thick forest trees and hard stony grounds, giving it the eerie look of dark woods, Gideon believed this was the one for him. Later along the lines, in 1753, Gideon was joined in by two of his brothers, Barzillai and Abiel Dudley from Guildford, Connecticut, who also purchased lands nearby his. The family line only expanded from here on as a man completely of a different lineage. Martin Dudley from Massachusetts also joined the settlers at Dudley Town and soon married Gideon's daughter. The village of Dudley has many tales and myths surrounding it, one being that it was a lot larger, when in fact it was a pretty small town, covered by three tall mountains, making for a much more darkened state than usual at noon. The town was also positioned in an area bad for farming, thanks to the rocky grounds that layered it. Still, many families flocked to Dudley for one reason or the other. As time progressed, it became clear to the lot that the building of shops, hospitals, cemeteries, churches, and so much more would be close to impossible. This was because of the poor positioning of the town, and so the number of families living here only ever peaked at 26. The present families would have to move over to the next town just to get provisions, as well as to bury a dead loved one. However, Despite the issues residents faced at Dudley, the town prospered further than would be expected. This was thanks to the timber produced in Dudley and the discovery of iron ore nearby the town. This kept most of its residents active in the town at bay, until it couldn't. The Tragic Fate of Dudley While the town was one of great success in the market, the town has now been emptied completely and renowned by the 20th century, and with this has come a surge in the idea of a curse used to explain away why such a prosperous town fell to nothing, why most of its residents had experienced strange occurrences, and why most of the Dudleys had untimely deaths. The residents of this black town in the 70s down to the 90s had been plagued with a series of strange and unnatural deaths as well as many of the people going insane towards their end day. The townspeople lived in a time of fear as to who would be next. A mother would awake one morning with no sign or trace of her young teenage boy who had been out at night, and more of the people would disappear without any idea of where they had gone. The people at the time had blamed the Dudleys for these occurrences, specifically Edmund Dudley, who in 1510 had been charged with treason for trying to overthrow the king and beheaded for his crime. It's believed that he had placed a curse on his generation, which was now affecting the town. However, three of the generation of Dudleys have been recorded to have abandoned that hell of a town and had lived normal lives and died of natural causes. However, it seemed the land itself had been home to some strange phenomenon or disease which sent a good number of the population living in it mad or with strange deaths. Abiel Dudley was of the case as he had lived his whole life in Dudley, racking up debts to which he had lost all his possessions and finally went insane, dying at the age of 90, 1799. It would seem that the closer people were to the Dudleys, the more tragic their fates were. 
1792, a Beale's neighbor and good friend, Gershon Hollister, had died while building a barn at William Tanner's home, a much closer neighbor to him. William Tanner was also said to have gone insane as well, much after a Beale. Much later in 1759, a new family, the Nathaniel Carters, moved into a Beale's home at Dudley, but tragedy would strike soon after as a plague swept the town taking many with them as well as the relatives and members of the Carters. This forced them to return to New York. Though, the folks of then believed that the curse followed them as well. Gideon Dudley's story was also known as well, as he had been one who had served in a war and had caught a disease from a foreign country, infecting his colleagues and soon spreading it throughout the state. More cases would populate the idea of a cursed town like the gruesome death of Sarah Fay the wife of General Herman Swift, a famous general who had served in the Revolutionary War. In 1804, Sarah had been struck directly by lightning while standing on the porch, killing her instantly. Poor Herman had come to find the remains of his wife on the porch. Soon after, he went insane and followed his wife underneath. Many more horrific tales have come from Dudley Town. The Aftermath After the Civil War, the residents of Dudley Town were on their toes and leaving, be it out of fear or despair. The majority of the population had gone on their way to find a new life. Whether it was a curse or not, by the early 1900s, the town had been completely evacuated or abandoned. Nature eventually slipped in, shrouding the buildings and others with roots and vines. Other buildings eventually fell apart. This wasn't the last of life the town would see. After the abandonment, a man named Dr. William Clark had purchased a thousand acres of land and moved in with his wife. He had fallen in love with the scenery and how peaceful it was. Still, Dudley would not spare him. William had been called to New York for work which he had gone to attend to. 36 hours later, after his return, he came to meet his totally deranged wife. She had gone insane. Though he tried all he could to help her, she couldn't be saved. Eventually, based on his tales, she committed suicide. To this day, Dudley Town is still deserted and forbidden. <laughs>